So after a battle with some mice in my ceiling, a month-long wait for a new work table, and a little bit of reorganizing, I'm finally able to start working on the Anycubic Chiron. So to get started on this build, I have to begin by taking it apart. I'm going to start by removing the original tool head, the extruder motor, and associated wiring, and then flip the machine on its side so I can access the main board and whatever else is lurking underneath. I've not done anything with this machine yet, so I'm not even sure what to expect when I get it open. The machine originally comes with a true dual Z-axis setup that has optical sensors on either side for gantry squaring. Being that I'll be using a BL touch, I can eliminate those in favor of the Z-tilt routine built into Clipper. The Manta board will be using EZ2209 drivers, which can utilize sensorless homing, so I'm not sure if I'll be retaining the X and Y switches or trying that just yet, but it'll be interesting to see it actually work if I do. I don't like the way the x-axis is set up and how the home switch on this machine is on a floating belt tensioner. I may redesign the x-axis carriers to be more like a Neptune or Ender or go totally apeshit and switch wire this thing. Compared to the Anycubic Cobra Max, this machine only has a single y-axis drive motor as opposed to the two running parallel on the Cobra. The Manto offers a dual output for a parallel driven axis, so that might be something I'll look into in the future. The original y-axis motor was busted. So I'll be attempting to run the y-axis off of the original extruder motor from my Elegu Neptune 3, which should provide adequate torque. It actually connected to the original board without any wiring snafus, and the machine works as it sits, but that's no fun for content creation. Speaking of, if you haven't already, please subscribe to the channel and like the video to pump the algorithm a little. It really helps with my future plans and endeavors for the channel. Also, if you haven't heard, I have a website which is jam-packed with, well, more of the same stuff. It's basically a landing page for my YouTube playlists and social channels, such as my GitHub page and other resources to help you along. Check it out at www.theferalengineer.com. So enough jibber-jabber, let's get down to business. I'll start out by removing the tool head wiring harness and the smaller harness that holds the wiring for the x-axis motor and extruder. I'm going to reuse some of this wiring. I'll just have to replace the connector at the end. Here, I'm disassembling the original tool head and cable chain assemblies. I plan on running the Big Tree Tech SB2209 CAN board, but I'll reuse the cable chain to carry the one cable needed to drive the whole extruder setup once it's finished. Now that that's out of the way, I'm removing all of the screws for the fan shroud so I can expose the hot end and the button heads for the drive wheels. The wires plug into a small breakout board inside. And check this out. Not sure if these are stock fans, but here we have a Creality 4010 blower and a Winsen axial cooling fan for the hot end heat sink. So now I'll finish removing the wheels and take off the entire hot end assembly. And the last thing to do before I roll it over is to remove the original touch screen. Okay, so it's up on its side. We've got the power supply, we've got the electrical enclosure. The power supply is actually screwed directly to the enclosure and on the inside there looks like there's a lot of stuff going on. I haven't gotten into this yet, but I'm going to crack this open and see what's what. So the way this machine is set up is that we've got the mains power coming in and it's going to here which is powering this 800 watt power supply, but it's also piggybacking off of this cable here and going into what essentially is a laptop power supply. It's just a separate brick that is sending power to the main board here. The controller in the middle, this board in the middle here is actually the bed controller and this is being sent a signal from the main board into this controller which is acting like a bridge to provide higher power to the heater then the MCU will actually withstand. Smaller printers can just use the heater controls off of here directly, but because this is so large and it requires such a higher wattage heater element, they're using this secondary board here to provide the adequate power without burning anything up. So at this point, I'm just going to continue forward. I'm gonna take this all out leave this in place, leave the power supply in place, and everything else is just gonna come out. The one thing that I have noticed with Anycubic is that they are very overzealous with their adhesives. 
this red stuff here is, is a little bit of a pain to get off. I haven't really tackled it with any alcohol or anything to see if that would dissolve it, but I have to kind of pick it away. And it's not, uh, let, let's just say it's not the hot glue that everybody else seems to be using at this point. So I got to flip the enclosure over or find a way to get underneath the enclosure here to get this fan off because the shroud is in the way of pulling off this daughter board that's mounted to the top of this MCU. If I take this off, I have access to the last screw. I thought I would get lucky and I was able to finagle my Allen key in here to get this corner screw off, but I, I'm kind of screwed, if you will, to get that one. So I'm just going to pull this fan out, get this card out, get the rest of this wiring out, and then I should have a better idea of what's going on here. So it's just three screws holding the fan in place. But of course they're from the top or underneath or however you want to look at it. Okay, so it's only two. There's a third one underneath there, but I guess that's not for this. Uh, Damien had warned me that he was spray painting or something and that there would be some kind of nasty dust in here so gonna have to clean all this up before i put it all back together but for right now it's fine and as i mentioned with the glue they go crazy with it in certain spots but other spots they didn't put anything all right so now this daughter card should lift right off and with that our mcu is almost ready to come out if you don't already have one Get yourself one of these kind of screwdrivers that has these replaceable heads. All the ones that I have are stored underneath here. Where you can get these fancy schmancy kits like this. And they're only a couple of bucks on Amazon. They're, they're very helpful for these little electronics projects. No pun intended, but shockingly, this uh, these screws were a little looser than I would have liked to have seen. And there we go. It's funny to me to think that most of these boards, if you look right there, Nat Mega 2560, they, these are just basically glorified Arduinos. They're, there's nothing really special to these except for the integrated stepper drivers and I.O. stuff. But essentially, if you have the knowledge to do so, you could pretty much do anything with these boards. Now, I'm not going to condone using Fusion 360 because I think Autodesk is Satan themselves, but I needed to design an adapter plate for the Manta to sit inside of the Chiron's enclosure, and I wanted to do one of those fancy-schmancy high-speed design videos that people seem to get a kick out of. So here we go, me fuddling around to Fusion 360 for a little while. I'm more of a SolidWorks guy. So here's my final design. Threw it into Prusa Slicer. Sliced the file using the PETG generic profile that I have, sent the G-code over to the machine, and let her rip. And now that that's out of the way, let's set up the Manta board to get that ready for bench testing. 